Welcome back everyone, Old Bubs here, and today we are going to put the sizzle sauce on this here KnifeJoy exclusive Manix 2 in 20 CV. The scales we're going to use today were a birthday gift. These are a full liner delete aluminum scale anodized in this beautiful purple color. I'm very excited, and they also eliminate the need for the lanyard tube, so they give you this little backspacer here that we'll check out. One of the absolute things about so many of these base Spider Co models is that they provide a really fun platform to customize your knife with tons of aftermarket options out there. So I hope watching me fumble through a disassembly and reassembly a time or two will hopefully give you the confidence to know what you're looking at ahead of time before you get into one of these projects. With a little bit of patience and a little bit of know-how, you can definitely get this done yourself. Some materials you see laid out here. We're going to need a T8 and a T10 Torx bit driver. I've got some cleaning cloths, some old 91% isopropyl. The lube I'm going to use today is a 10 weight nano oil. There's lots of different options out there, whether you're using KPL or anything like that. There's lots of great lubes out there. A little sunshine jewelry cloth that I use to polish washers up a little bit. We'll see if we end up needing this at all. This is the lanyard tube press from Sharp Dress Knives. This is the tool that I've been excited to use because a lot of times on these spider coes, the lanyard tube is a difficult part to get out. On a Manix, it's a little bit easier than a PM2 and a Para 3, but we'll see if we can just show the idea of this tool while we're at it. So let's go ahead and pop off this pocket clip here. These are T8 screws on this one. Most of the time on spider codes, they are a T6. So if you're trying to apply this logic to a different spider co, oftentimes the pocket clip screws are T6. I think my replacement pocket clip screws are gonna be a T6 anyhow. I have a fresh hardware pack coming in here, but generally speaking, I advise that you uh, lay out your screws in the way that they came off so that you always have a road map to what you're doing. So always you want to put really good pressure down on the screw to not strip it out. And if it's not budging on you, a lot of times that's Loctite related. So you just want to gradually apply pressure until that Loctite snaps off of there. Okay. Go ahead and take pivot screw out. That gives us one side off. Let's go ahead and take the screws of the other ones out here. Oh, smarter bubs would have probably practiced this ahead of time because it's been a little while since I have taken apart a Manix but you're getting my inadvertent 4 a.m. wake up knife disassembly because I'd rather do this and do something productive than not be able to sleep in bed so here we go okay so that takes apart our knife here be careful there is a spring in here just have to create separation here save our backspacer and part of what's holding us back here is this lanyard tube that it holds a little bit of pressure but all you got to do is just clear that mechanism and we can swing it over here. See a little fun part about how the Manix works. But we have a spring on this little ball cage. And this little tiny ball sits in there. Remember, of course, to save all of your old parts. We're going to bring in this pop of blue with a little ceramic ball in there. That's made by Flytanium if you're looking for parts. All right, so let's get this open here. Save our washer to the side. And with this lanyard tube on the Manix, you can just kind of rock it back and forth until one side gives way. We got a G10 scale that came off here on this side. 
And once the G10 comes out, it is it does have a gen, gentle little chamfer on the outside there. And you can see very quickly why this tool is invented. So let's see. So you can push this in here. And then with, what this does so as we tighten it down, pushes the lanyard tube out. Just like that. Very cool tool. If we didn't have that, we could have just wiggled and jiggled until that eventually came loose. But since we have the tool, we might as well use the tool. Do the same thing over here on this side. If you're gonna do a lot of this, I highly recommend this tool. This is the first time I've had the pleasure, and man, was that easier. There goes lanyard tube. We don't need that anyway right now. Set all that aside. This is our pivot that fell out of there. We'll definitely still need that. So now we're just going to take the opportunity while we're in here. Use a little rubbing alcohol. Clean up our washers. Mmm, nice. No reason to put a knife back together dirty. They all come with a little bit of oil from the factory. It may not be as high grade of an oil that we're using in the aftermarket world. All right, now I'm gonna take these washers, just give them a little figure eight polish, gentle, even pressure on this jewelry cloth. Just smooth things out a little bit, shines it up. We'll make sure that that's the knife blade side. Same thing on this one here. You want to make sure that you're not removing much material on here. You don't need to, and you can just end up with some centering issues, etc. if you go too crazy. Alright, let's start reassembling. So sort of the trick to the Manix here is how this backspacer interacts here with our with our spring and our ball cage so I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna put in this little spacer that comes with it and then we'll put in one of the screws into this so that we have some tiltability here I'll show you what that means in just a second here drop in a backspacer it's the t8 screw and I'd forgotten my thread locker for a second there so when you drop these screws in just put a tiny little bit of thread locker on here and ode to Shabazz I do prefer the Loctite on a stick Okay, and instead of our satin screws, I grabbed a pack of titanium 
black screws from Flytanium for this. Because I wanted to match the barrel spacer and I just thought it would be cool. Gotta get this to thread into that. There we go. Now I'll hit it. Alright. So we'll put that in there, but we're not going to tighten it all the way down. We'll snug it up once we get this all put together here. Grab a washer. The washers on these go under the pivot. You don't need any lube on the scale side. I just put a drop there because it helps the washer stay in place. You definitely need a little bit of loop there. And these scales have the D shape on one side. So you gotta make sure that we leave that up. Find one of our pivot screws. Basically what you want to do here is you want to build the knife on one scale to the best of your ability so that things don't fall apart on you. And as always, it looks much more finicky on camera than it is in reality. Okay, so here's the part where we're gonna get a little bit crazy. This is the hardest part of the Manix. Okay, so the big trick here is you have to get it lined up in the slot here. Without losing the ball a hundred times. Okay, so we got our ball bearing in there. Okay. Into the slot. Okay. Now we're lining up. Now we're just gonna have to elevate that out of there just a little bit to get the blade on here. Then in theory, we can drop this screw in. This front part of the back spacer. We can get everything lined up just right. Don't want to force my screws here. Looks like we are just not quite pressed far down enough. Got to get some tension off of the lock bar get this guy drop into place there we go that's looking beautiful now we don't want to crank on this but we do want to get it snug so it doesn't go anywhere Drop another washer in here. Now we'll need to line the D shape up of this pivot. But you can see that that's down, so Just kind of rotate it around until you're in the right spot. All right, once you get that D shape lined up and it clicks in, you can tell by having no gap on the backspacer there. Just get that 
locked in here. Now we'll put these screws in on this side. Being very careful on these titanium screws. This thing is looking so cool. Wow, eh? Okay. So our centering is just absolutely stellar. And now, want to go in there and lube up our ball bearing. I really like 10 weight nano oil for this. Get that. Oh, that is so free swingy and smooth. Okay. So now we'll just snug down this pivot. One of the beautiful things about the Manix is that it it can handle a pretty tight pivot. So we got this just a touch over. But it's it's one of those that it can handle a full on it can handle a, an absolutely solid lock up no blade play beautiful it's kind of slick without the pocket clip to anchor on i love how that look is coming together look how narrow that ends up being with the liner delete beautiful i'll have to break this in a little bit this is a brand new pivot Beautiful. Okay. Now last step here, just to drop on our Lynch Northwest pocket clip. These are T6s. I love these Lynch Northwest clips for spider coes because look how look how deep carry that is and they really they really do make a difference for how it slides in and out of your pocket there's our setup there's our finished product fantastic I love this color scheme this came out absolutely perfect. The ergos on it are incredible, just like the Manix. It's a little slimmer in hand. It's gonna be a little lighter. Everything's gonna be good. I hope this gives you the courage to go ahead and step into the world of customization on your own knives. I hope that you'll let love and light fill your life. Stay sharp out there, friends. I will see you all on the next one.